Why do birds sing? Is it because it feels good? Is it because their parents taught them? Maybe it's because they have a syrinx? In 1963, this guy, Nico Tinbergen, published a very important paper called On Aims and Methods of Ethology. The paper describes how there are many different and complementary ways for explaining why creatures behave the way they do. If you want to understand why something is the way it is in the living world, you can start by asking Tim Bergen's four questions. Nico Tinbergen's four questions. Tinbergen's first question is about function. What is the trait there? to do. In birds, the function of the song is usually to attract mates. Singing helps a potential mate to find you, and the loudness and quality of your song indicates your potential as a parent. In general, the function of a trait is a description of how that trait improves fitness. A trait's function is what it does to ensure the continuation of the lineage. Tinbergen's second question is about development. How did the trait come to be? In many birds, song development occurs during a sensitive period right after hatching, where the chicks learn to mimic the song of their parents. We know this from experiments where the chicks are removed from their parents early on, and then their song develops in isolation. This chart shows the song patterns of two finches. This one's song developed normally, but this song developed without parental input. In general, the development of a trait is the process that an organism must go through in order for the trait to be expressed. Developmental histories can vary, and so we can't know why a trait is the way it is unless we understand how the trait came to be there. Tinbergen's third question is about evolution. What is the phylogenetic history of the trait? Was it present in distant ancestors? Ancestors. Here is a phylogenetic tree that maps different song patterns in Orioles. What you can see is that these song types aren't distributed randomly, they're clustered here and here. So what we can say is that these birds have the songs that they have because their ancestors did. It's important to note here that the evolutionary history of a trait is different from its current function. Vestigial traits, like my appendix here, don't have a current function. I have an appendix only because my ancestors had an appendix. Tinbergen's fourth question is about mechanism. How does it work? In birds, song gets produced with a special organ called the syrinx, which is located close to the branching of the lungs. Because the syrinx is connected to both tubes, birds can actually emit two unique sounds at once. In general, the mechanism of a trait is a story about the pushes and the pulls and the other physical causes which are responsible for the trait's structure. Unless we understand the mechanism, we won't be able to know why a trait takes the form that it does. However, just understanding mechanism won't get us very far. We need answers to all four of Tinbergen's questions if we're to really know why a trait is the way it is. Well, there you have it. Timbergen's four questions for understanding biological form are function, development, evolution, and mechanism. What these questions show is that there are many different ways that we can explain living systems, and these different explanations are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they're complementary. It's only by taking a variety of perspectives that we can gain any truly meaningful understanding of the biological world within which we are embedded. Oh hey! <laughs> You're still here! Well, if you liked this video, you might want to check out this lecture on Tinbergen's Four Questions that we're hosting live on this channel on July 6th. It's by Dr. David Wilson, who's been using a Four Questions approach to teach evolutionary biology for decades. He's also my advisor, so I can tell you, he's a pretty good guy! That lecture will be the first in a 10-part seminar series that we're hosting in July. Twice a week, we'll be streaming live guest lectures from some really fascinating biologists, and then my students and I will make videos about those lectures just like this one. So I'll put a link to David's lecture somewhere over there-ish, and you can click over here if you want to subscribe to our channel to see more. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs>